Hi, and welcome to another edition of AZ Theory. So you're looking at this and probably going, what in the hell is this? <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? What does a derivative of a regex even mean? What, it, what could that possibly even mean? Like we're combining calculus and theoretical computer science now? No, so it, it is actually something that is uh, quite fundamental. So what a derivative is, is basically, if you think of like a function in uh, calculus, what you're really doing, like say x squared, and you want to take the derivative of it, we uh, of course get 2x. And if you don't know what that is, it's not that important. So the idea here is that we're reducing some expression into another one. And there are many ways that we can define a derivative, quote unquote, in a language. But one way that we'll actually look at this is in the following way. So let's let a u be some string, so any string in sigma star, and uh, l any, oops, any language. So what is a, a derivative of this language l? And um, if you think about, if you've ever taken um, multi-dimensional calculus, you can actually take derivatives in any one of uh, the dimensions that you're working on. So it's not that there's one derivative, but you can have uh, different derivatives depending on what you're interested in. So here is actually a derivative with respect to you. So what does it look like? We're going to denote it by u to the minus 1 uh, l. And so what is this language? It's all the strings v such that u v is in l. So in other words, take every string in l, and if u, the string u, is at the front of it, take it away, and, and uh, you will be left with uh, v right here. So uh, just as an example, so suppose that l was uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, just as a, a quick example then what we can do, do is if u is equal to the string uh, 1, just a single 1, then 1 to the minus 1, so if this is the string 1 to the minus 1, uh, l, is going to be get every single string in this language that starts with 1. So uh, I'm going to not choose the 0, 1 here. But I, so I am going to choose the 1, 0, and the 1, 1 here, but I'm going to take away the, the string I'm taking the derivative of, which is a 1 in this case. So therefore, I'm going to take this 1 away at the beginning and this 1 at the beginning. So what I'm left with is 0 and 1. Okay, So that's what a derivative of a regex, uh, of a regex is. It basically, the similar thing. But we're really defining it on the language, but we're going to write it in terms of a regex. So the reason why we want to do this with a regex is that you can actually see what's going on with the strings that you're taking the derivative of. So it's just a lot easier that way. So let's see. So let's actually look at this. So how do we actually define a, a derivative of a regex? Well, what we need to do here is we need to actually revisit the definition of what a regex is, which had those three base cases and the three inductive cases. So let's look at those three cases. So if r is equal to the empty string, uh, the second case is when it's the empty set, three is when r is a single character, the fourth case is when r is the union of two smaller regexes, the next one is concatenation of two regexes. And six is it's when it's the star of a regex. Okay. So now let's actually consider what taking the derivative of a regex even looks like. So what we have here, so let's let's just make sure I have my notes straight. Okay. So if we have a single character, so let's let A 
B, A, actually I'm going to call it B for a reason you'll see, see in a second. Let B be a single character. Then let's actually uh, figure out what B to the minus 1 R is in each one of these cases. So if we take the derivative of this thing, well, the only string in this language is the empty string. So that, that tells us that B is not in the not at the start of any string in this language because there's only one string in there and that string has no characters at all. So therefore, this is the empty set because there's no string in here that starts with B. That's another way to say it. Um, for the empty set, it's the exact same story because there's no, str no string at all in it. So therefore, it can't uh, actually have anything in it. Okay, so now this is the more interest, uh, starting to be a more interesting case. Well, what happens here, if we take the derivative of this, well, what could possibly happen? Well, it's either the case that A is equal to B or they're different. Well, if they're different, then obviously no string in here starts with a B, so this would be the empty set. So it's the empty set if... Uh, a is not equal to B, but if it is equal to B, so A and B are the same, so don't be fooled that this looks different than this. It's just a name of a, of a variable. So here, they could actually technically be the same. So if, if these two are the same thing, I'm taking the derivative of this character. Well, there is a string in this language that does start with an A. Um, so therefore, I could take the derivative of it, but remember what the derivative said, it's taking away the front of that string. So if these are the same, and I take away the one character in here, I'm just with, uh, left with the empty string. So here, I'm actually going to get the empty string if A is equal to B. Pretty cool. So now let's actually work on the other cases. So I'm actually going to do these bottom up because the union case, uh, actually no, the fifth case is the hardest. I'm going to do the union case. So what this is really saying is take the derivative of, yeah, so it's take the derivative of R1 union R2, whatever that means. So notice here that we're taking the strings of R1 union R2. Well, that's the same thing as taking the derivative with respect to R1 and then union it with the derivative with respect to R2. It's kind of like addition with real derivatives in calculus. If you have something plus something else and you have the derivative of the whole thing, then what you can do is you can just take the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. So here we can actually show that this is equal to b to negative 1 R1 union b to the negative 1 r2. I right, should get out of the way. Okay, so then now let's actually do the star one because that's the quote-unquote easier one. Um, so what we're asking is we're trying to take the derivative of r1 star. So what does this actually look like? Well, let's see. So notice that the empty string is always in the star of any language, right? So therefore, if I take the derivative of it, it's not going to do it. The, the empty string is not going to help us at all. So we don't even need to worry about the empty string. So if we revisit what the definition of star means, it's the empty string, which is not relevant here anymore, union, the regex itself, or the language of the regex, I guess, union, it concatenated with itself, union, it concatenated with itself three times, then four times, then five times, etc. Well, in each one of those, so let, let's actually draw it out. So R1 star, or at least the language of it, so I'm, I'm actually going to abuse notation here, so, um, but it's essentially the same thing as saying, um, let me actually do it this way, it's the empty string union R1 union R1 R1 union three copies oops not R2 R1 union etc 
So notice that this is going to be a complete non-starter, and it's, it doesn't actually matter because look at all these unions. We just did union, and if we do the derivative of the, the empty string, that gives us the empty set. But if I union the empty set with anything, it doesn't change anything. So that, that's nice. But look at all of these over here. They, every single one of them has an R1 in it. So what we can do is we can factor out the R1 now, and the only one that really matters now is that one regular expression, R1. If this B right here is not in, the, in R1, then it can't be in the star at all because it's not the empty string and it can't possibly be, um, and if it's not in R1, it can't be in any of the other terms. So what we can show then is that this is equal to, not, not arrow, equal to b to the negative 1 on one occurrence of this regex and then r1 star after it. And let's actually make sure that this is right. So um, if b to the negative 1 r1 is not the empty set, that means I can take the derivative of it which means that I'll get a non-empty uh, regular expression. But if, it, if this evaluates to the empty set, notice that this is concatenated with this. So empty set concatenated with anything is going to be the empty set. So if I can't take the derivative of a single occurrence of R1, I can't do the star, which totally makes sense because I can't do the um, empty string either and I can't do any of the single reg uh, regular expressions. Cool. So now the, I guess, most interesting case is this one. So what is this really saying? This is saying that I want to take, uh, I'll actually put it in a different color so we can see. So b to the negative 1 uh, of the regex r1 concatenated with r2. So you may be thinking, okay, well, it's kind of like, uh, this scenario right here, so we can just take the the regex, the derivative of just R1, and then leave R2 to the to the wayside. That's close, but not quite. So we can actually do that, and that is one of the terms that could happen. That's one case that could occur. So let's just put that down right away. So we can just take the derivative of R1, and then just concatenate R2 on the other end. But suppose that uh, R1 actually has the empty string within it. Well, then what happens is the strings that have empty string chosen for R1 and anything in R2, now we have to take the derivative with respect to those. If you've ever taken calculus, you'll very certainly have heard of the chain rule, which is the derivative of something times something else. That's exactly what's happening here. We have something times concatenated with something else. And so therefore, we need to do the derivative of the second piece. So, But that only can occur if R1 can actually generate the empty string. If R1 can't generate the empty string, then there, I can never take the derivative of R2. So what we really have here is union, and I'm going to have um, a b to the negative one r two because that's I'm taking the derivative of the of r two, assuming that r one can make the empty string. But I'm going to condition that, so this is actually a pretty standard notation, and I'll explain what it means. So this uh, one function uh, condition on the fact that epsilon is in r one. So what in the hell does this mean? This says, this is an indicator. So this is an indicator to say, I'm going to be, uh, I, I, I actually should define this formally. So uh, what this says is, this function on some expression x is going to be one of two things. It's going to be the empty string if x is true and the empty set otherwise. Okay, 
So why would you want this? We want this because if x is true, that means that the empty string can be made by r1, then that means I can take the derivative with respect to r2. But if x is not true, which means that the empty string is not in r1, then what happens is that I can't take the derivative with respect to r2, so this becomes the empty set, and empty set concatenated with anything is the empty set which is pretty dang cool. So why, why would you even care about this? Why does this even matter? So what this allows us to do is to start off with a regex and to proceed one character at a time and then reduce the regular expression over and over and over. And what happens at the end is we can determine whether a string it can be made with the regex. So we take a string as input and proceed with one character at a time trying to take the derivative every single time. And if at some point we can't take the derivative, it results in the empty set, then that tells us that that string can't be made by that regex. But if we can go all the way through and we can take the derivative every time, we can show that the string can be made by the regex. And in the next video, we're going to actually do an example of this. So I hope that was interesting. I haven't heard of this until very recently. So this is called a Brozowski derivative. I can't pronounce it for sure. Um, but it's called a Brozowski derivative. Um, and it's primarily used to show whether a string is described by a regex or not without having to convert it into an NFA or a DFA and then just check it there. You can do it directly using a regex, which is pretty cool. So I hope that was interesting. Leave comments down below if you uh, were able to find anything else interesting about derivatives or regexes or whatever. Please like and subscribe to the channel. That also really helps with us um, uh, maintaining the growth of the channel. And as always, I'll see you next time.